and welcome to space. This month we're here in Lisbon and Rome in a packed program in which we'll see how satellites are helping us keep ships safe at sea. And we have an insight into what it's really like to live in space from Samantha Cristoforetti. But first, let's have a look at some other news from the universe this month. Danish ESA astronaut Andreas Mogensen and Kazakh cosmonaut Aydin Ambatov have spent a packed 10 days in orbit. One of Mogensen's experiments saw him control a robot on Earth from space. Private space firm Blue Origin says it will build and launch its new rockets from Florida. Previous test flights have been from Texas. The secretive firm aims to develop a fleet of reusable launchers. Touchdown. And NASA's New Horizons probe has released this fresh and unique view of hazy layers of atmosphere above Pluto's frozen plains. To our main story now, and we're behind the scenes with the Italian Coast Guard as they show us how they use satellite technology every day. Setting off from Fiumicino near Rome to inspect the local fishing fleet. The crew has located a target vessel through the transponder signal it's been sending via satellite, and now they're checking if everything is in order. It's just one of the many responsibilities the Coast Guard has. Keeping under control illegal fishing, search and rescue, anti-pollution, anti-piracy and anti-terrorism. Plus, of course, all those missions that other police corps can assign us for national security purposes. In nearby Rome is the Italian Coast Guard's emergency control room. All kinds of incidents are handled here. Recently, they've been especially busy as they deal with stranded migrants in the Mediterranean. When we have a few days of good weather and the sea state is good, there are lots of people taking off. So it can be that on a given day, we're dealing with 25 to 26 situations at the same time. Each time a mayday call is made, time is critical. For the Guardia Costiera, saving lives means having precise information about where boats are across a huge stretch of open sea. And that entire process of search and rescue relies heavily on satellite technologies. Here on the map you can see the Sicilian coast and the Libyan coast. Usually migrants use satellite phones to send distress calls as soon as their boat is 10, 20 or 30 miles off the Libyan coast. By using satellite technologies we can pinpoint the course of merchant ships and fishing ships in the nearby area. And at that point we need to decide which ship is best positioned to provide assistance. All kinds of satellites are now involved in maritime security. Some, like Europe's Sentinel fleet, carry radar and optical instruments, while others, like Canada's Exact Earth constellation, pick up ships' automatic identification system messages. ESA's Carsten Turbin talks us through what's up there. The first layer is the uh, layer about low Earth orbit which is 500 to 1,000 kilometers, where we have mainly the Earth observation satellites. The next layer is uh, what we call the medium Earth orbit, about 30,000 kilometers, where we have the navigation systems uh, like Galileo and GPS. And the next level where you have, which is the most common loan, is the geostationary orbit, which is 36,000 kilometers away, so long distance for telecommunication. And you have also your weather satellites to see the weather in real time. The job of processing so much data is done here in Lisbon at the European Maritime Safety Agency. Inside EMSA, the team tracks ships crossing European waters. They pass near real-time information to clients dealing with everything from piracy to border control. And they have a special focus on using satellites to track oil spills at sea. Here, we have our oil spill detection system. You see here nicely the spill that has been produced by a ship passing by the British coast. Now you want to know who is the vessel, who is the polluter. We can cross-check with the data we have in our other system where we have the information on the ship positions. We can overlay this information and then you see nicely that the ship here exactly followed the spill itself. 
So here we have a perfect match. However, there are limitations to how useful the current radar and optical satellites can be in tracking pollution. Nowadays we have almost twice per day an overpass over Europe. So twice per day we can look for illegal discharges in European waters. But that's not so sufficient. And if ship owners know what is the orbiting window of such satellites, then of course it makes it very easy when they want to do something which is not allowed to do it when the satellite is not, is not looking. So that is really a problem. This is where ESA comes in. The space agency works with users and the satellite industry to find new technical solutions to improve maritime security. What are the current needs of the users? What are the tools available today? And what are the gaps, the missing points, to fill the blue gap on the Earth map and the oceans with information they need? And then we identify the surface, the missing information. We develop the tools, either the ground processing, the algorithms, or the satellite technology for the next generation, either Earth observation or telecom or radar satellites. Later this year and next, more satellites will be launched, and they'll cover different orbital paths to see even more of what's happening at sea. Meanwhile, the Coast Guard will continue to rely on space for their most important task, search and rescue. Today's satellite technology allows us to save human lives. Basically, because it solves the most difficult problem of all, which is positioning, obtaining the coordinates of your location. Having a satellite technology capable of providing your position so that you can contact authorities which, in turn, can rescue you in case of necessity, is truly what makes the difference between life and death. And now away from Lisbon and to Cologne, where we have our regular update from the Astronaut Academy and that question of what it's really like to live on the ISS. Hello, I'm astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti and I just got back from a 200-day stay on the International Space Station. Let's talk about space. Living and working in space can be a challenge because Things float and you float, which is a lot of fun, of course, but you have to get used to it. At the beginning, it was sort of easy to become uh, disoriented, not in a way that I would be desperately wondering what, where was up and down, but uh, sometimes I would come up from a module and it would take me a second to actually figure out what direction I was supposed to go to get to the place I wanted to go to. When I first got there, I was really careful and I really mostly just moved from one handle to the next like that. But then, as you get more experienced and more comfortable with floating and controlling your body in the three dimensions, then you can just push yourself off and land exactly where you want it to be. That's all for now. Next month on Space, we're going to have a close look at Jupiter and its mysterious moons. See you then. <laughs>